we go. That feels like a nice trigger there. Well, a big porgy, but a nice trigger. We're here on a Silly Lily rental station. Skiff here with Gary from Silly Lily, and we've got a nice sea bass here. Look at this short sea bass, but it's a sea bass. And actually, what we're doing today is we're bottom fishing in just inside Merch's Inlet, back over our shoulder. We're fishing the rock piles along the Cupsog side, and we're using squid and clam, and we're catching sea bass. But our target and quarry today really is trigger fish. And that's what we're going to be doing on today's show with Gary. And Gary, trigger fish, this is the time of year, July, this is trigger fish time, right? Yeah, you'll catch them as soon as the water warms up. This year was a little early. We started getting them the end of June. Um, usually they come in in July, and they'll be around until uh, September. Until right. The water starts to chill down. Absolutely, but it's a great way to get the kids involved because it's fast and furious. It's a nice mixed bag here. We're going to see some trigger fish today, some sea bass, some porgies. And you never know what else you're going to find here, Marichu. So it's going to be a nice show, relaxing show. we got the right day to do it. Not too hot. Not bad, not bad. We're going to have a lot of fun here on the fish line with Gary from Silly Lily. We'll be right back. I still got my bait here too, Gary. All right, folks. It's time for the Northeast Premier Fishing Show. The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson. Now in our second decade. The Fishing Line is brought to you by Marine Formula Stable. To prevent the damaging effects of ethanol in your fuel tank, use Marine Formula Stable. And by the Long Island Power Authority. More choice, better service, LIPA. And by the Fishing Report Hotline. 24-hour fishing reports by phone when you need them. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. Yeah. This is new Marine Formula Stay Bill Ethanol Treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new Marine Formula Stay Bill. Nah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start. And repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine Formula Stay Bill would prevent that. With twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with Stay Bill. Oh, fish on, here we go. Hey, folks, when I'm not out here doing the Fishing Line television show, guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM bringing you the Fishing Line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up-to-the-minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the Fishing Line. Ready for your private or group charter, Captree's 65-foot Bay Princess is Captree's only choice for bass, blues, fluke, blackfish, or any species. Large, roomy, and clean, the Bay Princess offers group charters with a family tradition and atmosphere with the Manzari family. Captain Nick's Bay Princess and Island Princess is comfortable Captree fishing at its best. For private fishing and pleasure charters or open boat half-day fishing, call Captain Nick at 631-587-6024. 631-587-6024. Hey, fishermen! For the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. Good to go. Okay. 
Okay, right about here is good. Just drop it or a little toss Just or drop it. How deep are we in here, Gary? We're about 20 feet. Okay. Do you know, are we going to kind of drop back, or is this all covered in rocks right here? Or? This is all right off this rock pile here is where you want to. So you're just going to let all the lanka line out and yeah. we all hooked to the boat, right? Yep. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time I did that, you know. <laughs> oh, yep, she just held. She just held. Yep. We're in a good spot. Yeah. This rock pile was here from when they built the jetties. Really? Yeah, they landed the barges here. Right. And uh, they put rocks and they, land, they had the trucks come out on these rocks and then they would bring them over to the inlet. That's amazing. Uh, so I'm just going to use uh, one of your rods and reels since you got them all rigged up. And we're just using a high-low rig with a porgy hook, right? Actually, I'm just using a, almost like a flounder rig. Oh, really? Okay. Porgy hooks right. right off the bottom. Excellent. We'll start with just a little sliver of clam. Right. Nice. Boy, that, that hit like a ton of bricks there, Gary. And with this tide ripping through here, this is unbelievable. It might be, a, I don't know what that, it might be a blackfish. Because we're all blackfish here in the rock piles, so. They fight like blackfish. This is a good fighting fish. I made a double head or something. I don't know what this is. Taking a line on me. What is this? Giant fluke? What is this? It's fighting like something. Fights, fights like a striped bass. Trigger. It is a trigger fish. Yeah. Wow. And this current, maybe we'll get them going now. This is, we got about a six knot current here. <laughs> Look at this thing fights like a blackfish. Look at that. Okay. That's our quarry on today's show. There you go. Look at that. That's why you hit him. Wow. Haven't seen one of these in a long time. Size. Average size. The biggest one I've ever seen was about five pounds. He's talking to you. He's chomping his teeth. He's got big teeth in the front. Look at that. That's a nice sized fish. We'll put him right on ice. Now this is a trigger fish now. He's got this here on the top, but if you're and you, you can't push that down no matter how hard you try, but if you press right here on this back one, it comes down and allows you to handle the fish. That's why they call it a trigger fish. Again, I can't move that for the life of me, but all you got to do is take this, get that going, you got your trigger. Nice yeah. fish. Look at that. That is a good eating fish. Woo! Yeah, baby. And we're going to have to shuffle through some tiny sea bass today and who knows blackfish and some fluke, maybe a couple of bass fishing on heavy rock piles here in the, just inside Marich's Inlet, which is right up here behind us. So using clams and we get out here a little bit early today, Gary, knowing that we're going to have a ripping tide and we're going to fish as the tide slows up because at the top of the tide when it, when it really slows down, almost in the slack, they really should bite pretty that's, well. That's huh? when you're going to get most of it. A little tough to fish under these conditions. Because you want to keep the tackle light so you can have some fun, but they do, I mean, I really could have brought my clam chumming outfit for bass because I got heavy current, I'm up to an eight ounce sinker here, but this rod's going to handle it. But if I had like my clam belly chumming rod or something like that, it might be a little bit easier for me. Yeah. But uh, these nice. things fight really hard. I, was, I thought I had a blackfish on there. My daughter once, the first time I took her for these, uh, she caught a double header like that. Right. And it almost pulled her out of the boat. Right. <laughs> Ooh boy. Went to a little bit bigger piece of clam on that one too. We'll see if that makes a difference here. So there's one. Look at this, he almost straightened the hook out on me too. Ah, oh, Gary's in. Trigger Gary? Yeah, this one Just gonna lift him in the boat or you really gotta net all these things? Oh, net them. Really? Well, uh... they really are hard fighting fish. It's amazing because we get them in Marich's Inlet, but we don't see a lot of them on a consistent basis in the other inlets. Like, you may get some in the Fire Island in the Sore Thumb Hole or something like that, but in Jones and Jones and Debs, it's you know uh, you don't see many of them around the bridges once in a while. They're not like we do here in Marich's. Yeah, 
Ready? Big one. Yep, nice one. Another big one. No man, he's a big fish. Okay. Ooh, I'm twice the size of yours, Rich. <laughs> They're always twice the size of mine. Everybody knows that. I don't catch many. Well, porgy. I don't know, but I, oh no, that's that's a trigger. I think. I think now we're getting them going here. Yeah, that's that's got to be a trigger the way he's fighting, Gary. Man, oh man, I love this. Yep. Ooh. Oh, it's a porgy. Porgy. What's nice a porgy? porgy? Nice. That's a keeper porgy. Little summer smorgasbord here and easy, easy. Come on. Another fish with a lot of fins you got to be careful of. That's a keeper porgy right there. That's ten and a half, whatever it's supposed to be. Nice. Excellent. Well, I had a bite. I lost him already. Wow. I'm starting to get fast and furious here now. Does it feel like a trigger gay? Definitely. You can really tell because it almost feels like a blackfish, which is pretty amazing. Pound for pound, I think these things fight better than anything else. Pull it out of my drag. Come on, baby, come on. This might be two. Can you get double headed? No, it's not. It was on a squid, so. Oh, really? There you go. Okay. Can I bring them to the surface? There you go. Good. That's a big one, too, on the squid. Look at that. It was a squid head. Ooh, baby. And they, they got a couple of those little, those beak teeth in them too, so you gotta, gotta be careful of that. You, well, you got you again there, Gary. You're a sleeping switch there, but oh, that is, yeah. look at that. Look at the size, big frying pans, yeah. platter size. Triggerfish, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Gary's gonna have to tie another hook on here. I got a bait up. We're here on Silly Lily's Fishing Station, right inside Winch's Inlet on some of these little rock piles, bailing away on summertime triggers. All right, there you go, Gary. Thank you, Rich. You want to just drop them in the cooler, or you want to cut them, or? I'm going to cut them off. OK. Oh, you can grab them by the tails, too. There you go. Here, take this. Excellent. Got their own little natural handle. We'll be back in just a minute. I know, they're awesome. Woo! Hey, folks, you've been coming to the FishingLine.com site for years for the only up-to-the-minute fishing reports on the web. Now get the same great reports 24 hours a day by telephone. That's right. The new Fishing Line report line is up and running, and best of all, it's free. No membership fees, no pay-by-the-minute fees, it costs you nothing. A free phone call for the best updated reports 24 hours a day, all by phone. Call 516-977-2088. 516-977-2088. Ready for your private or group charter, Captree's 65-foot Bay Princess is Captree's only choice for bass, blues, fluke, blackfish, or any species. Large, roomy, and clean, the Bay Princess offers group charters with a family tradition and atmosphere with the Manzari family. Captain Nick's Bay Princess and Island Princess is comfortable captree fishing at its best. For private fishing and pleasure charters or open boat half-day fishing, call Captain Nick at 631-587-6024. 631-587-6024. Hey, fishermen! For the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. TheFishingLine.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to The Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with TheFishingLine.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.TheFishingLine.com. Gary, when somebody's coming out to Silly Lily, whether with their own boat for the ramp here or to get a rental skiff, what can they expect? Well, uh, they can expect us to be here early in the morning, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock every day. Uh, we want everybody to catch fish, so we'll give you a map and show you where they're biting. We have bait and tackle. 
and uh, we rent the boats and motors. Absolutely. Now you got a wide expanse. You got certain areas for fluke, certain areas for the trigger fish, and you'll go over that with everybody in the station before yeah. they go in the water. Right? Yeah, we uh, based it on what people caught the day before. Right. Um, and like today, uh, we're going to try for the uh, trigger fish, and um, you want to fish an area where there's structure, either mm -hmm. rocks or buoy chains. Uh, when you're fishing for fluke, you want to fish the edges of the channels, edges of the sandbars. All things that you can do from a rental boat. Now here in Merchers Bay, even on one of these little rental skiffs, you can get sea bass, fluke, flounder in the spring, trigger fish like today, striped bass, bluefish, sea bass. Everything's available here. We've got some great action going on now at the trigger fish. We should get back to that. Sounds good. Oh yeah. Oh, that feels like a trigger. He's really dig digging wow. in. Look at that. They actually take a line on conventional tackle. It's like catching a, a big trout in a hard running stream. This current is helping him, that's for sure. Jeez. Man. I got 20 pound braid on here, but I don't want to tighten the drag too much because then he could pull the hook. Come right out of his mouth. Now we're only 20 feet of water. I still can't get him in here. Look at that. That's a big that's a big one, eh, Gary, I think. I don't want to let him flop on top of the water. Let me get, get him up ahead of you, Gary, so I can drop him back into the net. Okay. Feels like bass fishing. You can't get these things in. You ready? Yeah. Here, here he comes back to you. Okay. There you go. That's how you do that. You have such a hard running tide, we're better off trying. It's a struggle, but we got to get him up ahead of the boat because. Otherwise, you're dragging them across the top of the water to get them to the net. So try to keep them in the water ahead so you can just lift them up to the surface and let them drop back with the current right into the uh, net. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling hooks on them. This one swallowed this one all the way down too, Gary. The big question, though, is what made you pick yellow as the color facility? Everything's yellow. The building's yellow. The shirts are yellow. Boats have yellow on them. I didn't pick the name either. You know, we bought it and they always had yellow boats. Right. Uh, in the old days, every different fishing station had different colored boats, like uh, Skidmore's used to have red, Cirillo's had green, Highway had white. Mm -hmm. um, so when you went out in the afternoon and you're trying to find your boats, you know you knew who was yours and who wasn't yours. <laughs> but uh, we just kept that color. These are white with the yellow, I've kept the yellow stripe on. Right. I just had a bite too. I think they're laying back behind the boat, Gary. Ooh, blackfish. No, sea bass. Nice sea bass. Yeah, just lift them in. Oh. Oh! Keep a sea bass too. So you got 30 years under your belt now. And, you know, tell, tell us about, about the fishing station. Full service. You got a ramp there still too, right? Yeah, we have a ramp. Um, we have a small marina. You now we have boat storage. All that stuff helps pay the bill. Right, right. Um, it's different than it was in the old days. In the old days, in the early 80s, there was eight fishing stations, each of them with like 50, 60 boats. Right. And uh, gradually they all disappeared. From the late 80s on, it just became harder and harder between insurance and uh, the economy and uh, fishing regulations. Hey fishermen, for the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m. or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. Hey folks, you've been coming to the FishingLine.com site for years for the only up-to-the-minute fishing reports on the web. 
Now get the same great reports 24 hours a day by telephone. That's right. The new Fisher Line report line is up and running, and best of all, it's free. No membership fees, no pay-by-the-minute fees. It costs you nothing. A free phone call for the best updated reports 24 hours a day, all by phone. Call 516-977-2088. 516-977-2088. Oh, fish on. Here we go. Hey, folks. When I'm not out here doing the fishing line television show, guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM bringing you the fishing line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up-to-the-minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the fishing line. When it comes to trigger fishing inside Merchants Bay, you have a couple of options. If you want to fish the buoys and the buoy chains, you can use light spinning tackle, 10 pound tests, have a lot of fun, but really don't underestimate these trigger fish. They fight very hard like a blackfish, they'll really test your tackle and your metal as well. Out near the inlet, fishing the east cut and the west cut or the rock piles, we're using conventional tackle. We're using four to eight ounce sinkers. I was using an eight ounce sinker even with braid line, which was a good choice today. So you want to use conventional tackle for that. You want a rod that has some spring at the front of it, but you need a lot of backbone. These are hard, hard fighting fish. You cannot underestimate these fish. Small number four porgies or small number eight little porgy hooks are going to be fine for this. It's really a good option. It's a lot of fun, light tackle, and real tackle buster trigger fish. Looks like a, it feels like a nice one. We had to come back here from the buoy chains just for the tide. Here you go. Oh, and you got double head. You got a little sea bass with them. We're getting killed by little tiny sea bass in here too. Nice. Nice trigger fish. Excellent. Gary, the folks at home have to be very careful handling this fish. This is a dagger on the top of the fish, isn't it? Yes, and it has bacteria and stuff on it, so you don't want to puncture your skin with it. Absolutely. And you can't bend that down no matter what you do. Even dead, you can't release that, that, that spine on it unless you come in behind it and just release the trigger. That's why they're called trigger fish. Again, it'll pop right up. You got a spine at the top, you got one right here, and you got another one here. This will not release unless you release the back one first, and then it comes in, and then you can handle the fish. But be careful with these. Now let's show them how to clean our fish. Okay, sounds good. Now when it comes to cleaning and filleting your trigger fish, this is not a sea bass or a blackfish. These fish have skin like shoe leather, don't they, Gary? Oh, yeah, that's the thickest skin I've seen on any fish. You can make a wallet out of these things. Really a wallet is, or the bottom of your shoe would be good. It really is scary. Now, if you saw the show earlier this season with Artie Horning from the South Shore Fish Market, he showed us flat, flexible, flat fish knives or the sturdier round fish knives. Now, you can get a real flexible flat fish knife not going to work for this. There are some more flexible or some more flatfish knives like these rappelers to have a little bit more backbone that you might want to use on some of these large triggerfish. But for the average triggerfish, I guess we come in here and we would take our round fish knife and we do these from the tail first, right, Gary? You get into the tail and basically you just fillet in the fish as you would any other fish, but you're working from the tail to the front. Now on some of the larger ones you might want to go to a longer blade and this way you're coming up, you're getting through the skin which is really light, like shoe leather and you come up here behind the fin and it's actually easy instead of cutting through this skin once you, you break this with the round fish knife you come in this way and it's easy to cut through the back side like this and pull your fillet off like that and then of course what you would do is with any other fish come in here feel for your bones and then just take these belly bones out of here like that and you can just hear how, how tough that is and you got a little row of pin bones here just like a pork or anything else you would just take that out and cut it just like that and you're basically done. Then of course if you want to skin it, now you're working from the back side. And here I might actually go to a thinner and more flexible knife. And now it's just grab the skin, pull that off and you're done like that. But you can just look how thick that skin is. There's almost no flesh left in that. It's like the sole of your shoe. It really is unbelievable. Gary, that's how you do it. You just got to be careful and take your time, but really you're working back to front to do these fish. Yep. Keep your knife sharp just like you That's said. right. Feels good. 
we come back here help you to Gary. Big trigger? Yeah. Now bring him up ahead of bring him up ahead of me here. And then slide him back in. Here you go. Okay, let him drop back. There you go. Nice color on that one. Nice big blue eyes. Ooh. There we go. Oh, that feels good. I went back to the clam. And these things are hard fighting fish. It's like fighting a cross between a, a bass and a blackfish or a fluke and a black uh, fluke and a blackfish. Come on, come on. And they take out line off the drag. Fun, fun fish. Especially in this hard current. Woo! He did me a favor by going deep, Gary, because now when I bring him up, I can drop him back to you. Come on. Ooh, man. Woo, baby. You see any color off the side of the boat yet, Gary? No, I don't see any of the boat. <laughs> it's like game fishing, baby. Oh, it's a nice, look at the colors on that. Oh, my. Woo. Thank you, Gary. That's a big one there. That might be, that might be the pool winner today. Look at that. That's a good way to end. Yeah. Wow, good. Look at that. Man, oh man. Jumbo size. Man, oh man. Look at the colors and that beautiful blues on the eyes. I hope the camera can pick that up. Nice bars. You can tell they got bars on the rocks and the mussel beds down here. Just like porgies on the reef or, or porgies on the mussel bed will give you vertical bars. Triggerfish the same way, but you can just see the beautiful blue on there. But that is a nice look. That might be one of the biggest of the day there, Gary. Yeah, one of the bigger ones. Gary, grab him by the handle, turn around, look at that. That is fat. Nice. All right, let's bait up and get a couple more here. All right, sounds good. Yeah, nice. Nice porgy. Uh, nice trigger fishing. So excited, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> That's been a long day. <laughs> oh, baby. All right. All right. Ooh, that was a good hit. Nice. These fish seem to be hitting better in the hard running tide than in the eddies or in the slack tide at the buoy chance today. Yeah, I thought we were going to pick up action when the tide flew, but that was it. These fish are relentless here today. Nice fish. Nothing wrong with that. Plenty of meat on that, plenty of fillets on these fish. But I am being pecked to death. Hand pecked by the sea bass. Put another piece of bait on here. On the squid. On the squid, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do, Gary? No, I'm good. Good? Excellent. Gary, great job today. Yeah, Thanks for a great day in the water here on the fish line. Caught some trigger fish today, showed the folks how to fillet them, which is a difficult thing because it's like shoe leather this skin. Make sure you got a sharp knife, but be careful. Showed you that, showed you some the folks some tackle, the different kinds of baits. Another beautiful scenic day on Merch's Bay, yeah. huh? Nice weather. It was perfect. Right. Couldn't be better. Come on out here, visit Gary, get yourself on a little silly. Lily rental skiff, get out there, some fluke, some porgy, some sea bass, and some trigger fish, which was our main quarry today, and have a summer smorgasbord here in Rich's Bay. It's just a mixed bag, bonanza like you can't believe. Get the kids out there. Gary, thank you very much. Great thank job, buddy. My pleasure. We'll see you folks next week right here on the fish line. The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson was brought to you by Marine Formula Stable. To prevent the damaging effects of ethanol in your fuel tank, use Marine Formula Stable. And by the Long Island Power Authority. More choice, better service, LIPA. And by the Fishing Report Hotline. 24-hour fishing reports. By phone when you need them.